This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use uh, Heek CNC to generate some tool paths for the CNC router. So I've opened HeekScan and this is a fresh install of Heek. So the first thing we're going to do is under Options, since our part file is an inch and um, the machine is an inch, we're going to open Options under View Options and scroll down to Units and change the units to inch will prompt us if we want to change the NC code generation units to, we'll want to say yes. So now that we've done that, we we'll want to open up our part file. You can create the part file however you like. I uh, used Inventor and exported a step file. Uh, Heeks imports a number of different formats. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Step's just nice and convenient. So we're not going to save changes to the default file. So now that we've opened this, we look at it in perspective view and see that the whole part file is here. And then if we scroll in on the end uh, at the origin here, we can see that I've set it up so that the part is in the positive y direction and the positive x direction, and the z origin sits right on the face of the part. So positive z is up here above the part, which is what we want for the CNC mills. So the next thing we want to do, now that we've got the part imported, is go ahead and just save as the part to save it as a hex file. This will be helpful. Hex has a tendency occasionally to uh, crash on us, so this is just a good way to get it in the right format so we can save frequently. Um, okay, so now first things first. If we click on program, we'll see that it gives us the options for uh, the machine type to use. In this case, it's going to be Linux CNC because um, we're using the CNC router. Uh, units for NC output is inch. And let's just double check the view units real quick to make sure those are inch. Yep, they are. Okay. And now under tools, uh, you'll see Heeks fills this list with a bunch of tools. So we're going to shift and click to select them all, and we'll just go ahead and delete them all so that they're not in our way. Um, and then we need to create the tool that we're going to use for the operation. So we'll right click on tools and we'll select new end mill. And if we click on this end mill, we've got all the properties for the end mill. So this end mill is actually going to be a quarter inch router bit, so we'll set the diameter to 0 0.25. Um, the other thing we'll change is the tool length offset. Since we're going to use uh, Z touch offs for all these, we'll set the tool length offset to 0. Okay. So now we need to create a sketch that um, we can use to um, profile around. So if we right click on the face of this part and then we go to the face option, we can make a sketch from face. So if we scroll down here, uh, we'll see that we can click on sketch and now the sketch is just the outline of the part. Look at it in perspective mode again. You can see that it's just the outline. So that's what we'll want the profile operation to follow. So the profile operation is going to follow around the outside edge of the part. So we'll go, we'll keep the sketch that we just created selected. We'll go to machining, add new milling operation, profile operation. Now, if we click go at this point, it'll generate G code for us and preview what's going to happen. So we can see, first of all, there's one tool path and it's pretty high up in the plane. So probably our settings aren't quite right. But down here in output is where it'll output the G code for the. Um, Linux CNC processor, post processor. So now let's click on that profile operation and down here in properties we've got all the properties for the operation. Uh, we're going to leave auto roll on, auto roll off turned on and I'm going to set the roll radius to 0.25 which will be the um, size of the part or size of the tool bit. And then if we scroll down a little bit further we can see where we start getting into our settings to figure out how deep this part is and how far the profile operation is going to go. So our start depth is zero. Remember zero is the start of the top plane of the part. Um, so that's good. Final depth. It's going to be the full depth of the part here. So I'm going to set that to negative 0 0.8. This is going to be milled out of three-quarter material. Um, so we're going to give us give ourselves an extra 50 thousandths or so to you know, adjust for differences in thicknesses in three-quarter material because it's going to be three-quarter pine, not necessarily plywood. Okay, 
So that's our final depth. The step down is how much, how far down the bit will go in each step. So if we hit go to generate our G code right now, you see it's doing many, many, many small passes. That's not exactly the best way to to save the tool bit. So our step down, we're going to set to 0 0.2. We click go. We now see that it's doing just a few profile operations to get down to the full depth. That uh, should be four. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Uh, horizontal feed rate, there's a bit of a science to generating feed rates and all that stuff, but for now we're just going to set this at 50 for the horizontal feed rate and uh, 4 for vertical feed rate. Okay, so click go again, everything's good, we've got our G code right here. So this will do our profile pass around, but what would be nice is if we did a quick pass to cut everything out and then we followed it up with a pass that'll um, run at a slower feed rate and actually do a nice finish on the part. So to do that, we can select Do Finishing Pass, and then we've got our finishing feed rate and options and things like that. So I'm going to set the finishing feed rate to 18. And I'm going to set the finishing cut mode to be Climb. So Climb milling is going to go uh, clockwise around the part rather than counterclockwise around the part. Um, so finishing step down, I'm going to set that at point, 0 0.8 so that we step fully down in one pass so that our finishing pass is a single pass. Um, and then clearance height for uh, both of these operations, I'm going to set at 0 0.1 because it doesn't actually need to be much higher than that. And same thing for the rapid safety space. Okay, now if we generate our G-code again, Notice that not much has changed because the cut operation and the finishing operation are going on the same profile. So there's actually two passes down here that we can't see because they're right on top of each other. So we'd like the first cut operation to leave some extra material so that the finishing operation actually has something to cut off and trim the part to the correct size. So under the profile operation, under offset extra, we'll see that we're going to set that to 0 0.1 generator code. Now what's happening is that the, prof the first cut operations are offset by 0.1 inch on the outside of the part so that our finishing operation now sits fully um, at the full dimension of the part. Um, so that's a good setup so far. One of the problems we're going to have though is that because this is being milled out of a larger piece of material, a larger piece of material will be anchored down to the spoil board of the machine. It means that this part can flop around as soon as the cut's gone all the way around. And that's going to make our finishing pass not really all that effective because the part's just wobbling around in there and we'll probably end up with a bad part. So the way we do that is by adding tags or tabs to the, uh, the profile operation so that it stays attached to uh, the waste material on the outside of the part. So to add tags, We'll click the plus arrow next to profile to open it up, and then click tags. And then down here at the bottom, we got this add tag button. Uh, so we're going to switch to the top view of the part so we can do this more easily. And we'll scroll in here, and we'll click add tag. And now it's going to ask us to pick the position for the tab. So I'm going to pick that position right there at the end of the part. So now if I go back to XYZ. Uh, we'll have to spin around actually. Uh, that's not going to be too easy to do. Let's uh, add another tag on the side of the part here so that we can see what's going on. Yeah, so this will be our first side tag right here. Okay, now let's go back to perspective. If we zoom in and click go, you can see what's happening is that the Z height of these cuts is hopping up over this tab, so it's leaving a tab. So we click on the tab, we can see the, the width and the height of the tab. I'm actually going to change these, so the width is going to be 0 0.25, it's a quarter of an inch, and the height is going to be 0 0.25 as well, just to make sure we've got a nice large tag to hold that on there. I'm going to update this one as well. Uh, any new tags we create after this, though, will have the same settings. So click go, you can see that tab just got a little bit higher up. 
So now, let's go back to our XY mode and add the rest of these tags in here. So we'll click Tags, Add Tag, click right in between those two paths, Tags, Add Tag, right in between the two paths again. And we'll do another one on the end here, Tags, Add Tag, right on the end. And then we'll do a few on these parts here, so Tags, Add Tag. We'll keep doing this until we get all the tags we want in here on the part. Do one more right there. And let's... I think that'll hold us pretty well. So if we click on the Tags folder here under Profile, we can see all the tags at once. And that looks like it's actually going to be a fair number to hold the part in place while it's milling. So now we'll go back to Perspective just so we can, so we can see what happened. We click Go. You can see that everywhere we've created a tag, there's a little Z-hop there that keeps the part from being cut out fully from the spoil board. So this part's pretty much ready to save the code generation, but because of how the part got drawn, if we look closely, the green lines are actually um, G1 commands or um, G2 or G3 commands, so these are actually cut uh, paths. The red line here is a rapid, so it's a G0. Um, and you'll notice right at the beginning we're doing a pretty major rapid all the way to the end. And there's where our roll on and roll off is. And that's not really overly convenient because the machine's going to traverse all the way down there to start the cut. When really, why doesn't this just start right there? So if we go back to the profile operation. If we click on the properties of the profile operation under use start point, we'll check that. And the start point's already set at 0, 0, 0, so we don't even need to change that. But now if we hit go, notice that the roll on and roll off are right here at the origin point of the part. So that's pretty much all it takes to create the profile, or the, the G-code for the part. So um, go is generated this, we can save this however we want. And then if we go to uh, machining, save NC file, let us save it to a file that we can then transfer over to the Linux CNC machine to run the mill. So next I'll, we'll, we'll do a quick video on how to set up the mill and prepare it for uh, running the part and we'll actually run the part.